to my immense gratitude to be able to give a lecture and give a short speech here and thanks for everyone for coming to this event and let me start this story first with my with my encountering to Alexander Chuma the coach I actually went back home on one of the weekends when I attended university and I just found a book in the table of my parents kitchen and I grabbed this book and I just started reading it and it was the diary of Alexander Chuma the coach this great Hungarian philologist and I I was deeply impressed about what he did. I was deeply impressed about uh, the courage that he had because his aim was to find connections with the Hungarian origins in deep in Asia. So he tried to go to um, the middle of Asia around Mongolia. That was his destination and he wanted to find the Hungarian roots of there. That was his, his assumption to uh, find Hungarians. But he had a very, very long journey with lots of obstacles and uh, it was incre incredibly hard to accomplish for him. And finally he never reached his destination. Uh, he only uh, could end up in Ladakh and uh, he started to um, make studies about the Tibetan language, which was undiscovered at the time, 200 years ago. So he became the pioneer of the Tibetan language. And then I realized that I really have to make this trip. I really have to get into his original footsteps and ride my bicycle from Hungary all the way to India, to Darjeeling. So I cycled uh, from Hungary to his uh, original uh, birthplace of Chuma Kurosh, which is currently located in Romania. And I got these uh, Hungarian three colors tribes, and then it became my mission to take these three colors tribes to his grave, to this to his tomb, to Darjeeling. And I wanted to do that all the way by bicycle, entirely by bicycle and by food. So human power, 100%. That was my mission. And I started my trip, I, I rode thousands of kilometers, um, I crossed Turkey, Iraq, Iran, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and uh, I had also very uh, harsh environments that I had to cope with, very cold and very warm temperatures, minus, from minus 20 up to 55 degrees Celsius. And there's a lot of parallel things between his original trip and my trip because uh, for example when I did my trip I had to face the coronavirus lockdown and when he did his uh, journey from Hungary to uh, India then he had to face the, um, the the plague the plague which is which the plague which was a very severe um, kind of a disease which was spreading all over uh, Turkey at that time. Also, he was arrested in India because he was suspected as a spy um, right next to Sabatu as far as I know. And uh, I was also arrested in Pakistan because I was also suspected as a spy because I, I did a kind of an illegal immigration from Afghanistan to Pakistan in order to avoid criminal areas uh, which were kind of risk of life so I really had to avoid these areas and I you saw the images you saw the footages when I had to cross the mountain pass uh, with the bicycle on my back that was the location where I had to go um, enter Pakistan from Afghanistan and it implied it, it this implicated in some results and the results were uh, being arrested and I had to spend um, almost a month in a jail in Pakistan. Chuma <laughs> spent more time in uh, uh, custody because he was I think, four or five months in custody and he couldn't move from Sadasi at the time. Also, he was illegally 
immigrated to uh, Punjab, which is currently part of Pakistan. So there are lots of similarities, and also in the incognito thing that he he wore some other dress because he wanted to hide away from uh, from um, officers. That, and that he didn't want to sh show that he's European because it was way easier to move in Asia at that time if someone didn't show that he's a European person. I also had to do such a thing because after the lockdown, I could only finish my trip to Darjeeling that took me six more days from Bihar, Chapra, because uh, I was also in custody, in custody in an hospital during the COVID lockdown. It had to take um, eight or nine, nine weeks in that hospital. And after that, the lockdown was over and finally I could move. I could uh, finish my trip. And then I arrived to the border of West Bengal, right next to Takur Ganj. And that was um, the point of return just 100 kilometers before the destination. I had to give up, I had to give up. And I was like, it's impossible. How could I give up? Because pe because the officers didn't let me in. West Bengal still had the regulation of uh, no foreigners enter entering in, in the area of West Bengal. They said that it's impossible. And uh, I really had to figure out something. So finally, I decided I will wear the Indian kurta dress, which is uh, which I got from a friend in the hospital, a yellow kurta dress. And I also wore a scarf from my uh, on my hair, and I could wear the mask because it was widespread during the lockdown times, even after lockdown times. So it was only my eyes which were visible, but my whole body. So I could. I was really like an Indian person, and uh, that's how I could enter West Bengal at the time. And even though I met two police officers and I had to talk to them, they did not reveal me. They did not recognize me as a European. Uh, so it, it was it was working well, and then I ended up in Darjeeling. And I was totally frustrated. There were police checkposts every single kilometer. Literally, police booth everywhere, and I, I approached the tomb of Alexander Chamay, the old cemetery. There was there were only a couple of kilometers, and I really felt that I'm gonna reach it. But I, it was I was still very very stressed about it, completely stressed. But then, when I entered the old cemetery, and when I saw the tomb of Alexander, I knew that. The mission is complete. So after 13,000 kilometers and 11 months of journey, I could finally reach the town of Alexander Choma. And that was the point of um, just mission complete, and I didn't have more ideas, I didn't have more thoughts in my mind. Nothing. It was, a, it was an empty box in my mind for, I think, half an hour. And then I realized that, okay, I, I wore a dress, an Indian dress, and I was traveling in incognito <coughs> for two days, only two days. But Alexander Choma traveled months long, or even almost a year long in uh, incognito. So he could not uh, afford to reveal himself. How frustrating could it have been for him? How stressful could it have been? I have no idea. It was even a very hard task to cope with his two days, but I wouldn't have been in his place, <laughs> honestly. And then I, I thought about the journey, the whole journey itself. And the journey was very long, it was very hard. I had lots of lots of challenges and obstacles. I faced many, many extremities. And I realized that Choma had to face even much more difficulties because he didn't have the technical equipment that I had. He didn't have a tent or a sleeping bag or a mattress or, or 
uh, technical um, um, clothes or a good boot, a pair of boots. No, he didn't have anything of that. So how could he manage crossing this huge mountain pass in the Himalayas and into the Hindu Kush mountains? How was it possible for him? How could he cross the deserts? I can't imagine that. I still can't imagine that. So thinking about that, I would, I would assume that we can have any dreams in our lives. We can dream as big as we can. We just have to place this courage of trauma behind it. We can place that courage and we can be as brave as trauma and we can reveal our dreams. We can, we can reach our goals, whatever it is. So that's what I learned from Chuma, and I really hope that you can learn from him too. Thank you very much for your uh, attention, and I really hope that you will be able to join us for for a round in um, in the exhibition that uh, we have just right under on the first floor, no, on the ground floor, sorry. So please join us and have a look at the exhibition. And thank you very much for the List Institute. And to be able, uh, and then also for uh, for you and for the mentorship to be able to be here and uh, to meet you. Thank you very much.